kitchen. Welcome back to my channel. This is my life with cancer series. Also, if you hear any noises, it's my cooking chair. Um, I haven't invested in a good one. So if you don't know me, my name is Tamara. I am diagnosed with stage four metastatic melanoma, which is uh, the most aggressive and deadly form of skin cancer that's out there. This is basically my diagnosis story. It's gonna be a long video. I'm warning you. You can always go to David Dobrik's vlogs. They're like four minutes long. I think it's important to explain the whole story. It's an important story. A lot of people have asked, you know, like how were you diagnosed or what is your diagnosis? And this is my story and I'm gonna jump right into it. And um, here's stage one. Okay, so this is stage one. When I first got diagnosed, I got diagnosed with stage 1 melanoma. It started in July of 2015. I was seeing the doctor because I managed to sprain both my ankles mounting a double mini. And if you know what double mini is, you know when you hit the mini, both of my ankles inverted. And after that, that's why I started wearing tape on both my ankles. I was not actually hurt, it was for preventative measures. So I went to the, see the doctor because it was, uh, I think it was almost two or three weeks before nationals and I really wanted to compete and I had to kind of get the okay from my doctor. So when I was seeing the doctor, she was looking at my ankles and it wasn't my normal doctor, it was a different one. And I kind of just said, hey, so I have this mole right here on my neck. I'm wondering if you think it looks weird. And I've been thinking about it for a long time because it was like a circular little mole. It was black. It was so different from every other mole on my body. I was like, I should really get this checked out. So she said that it didn't look weird, but she said she's gonna send me to a dermatologist. That was July of 2015. And I was to see the dermatologist on my birthday, actually, my 19th birthday. I did go see him. He said, I don't think it looks worrisome, but we're gonna biopsy it and remove it just in case, just for precaution. It was gonna do it that day and I was like, Hell no, I'm going out tonight. It is my 19th birthday. I am going to the bar and I'm not having an ugly band-aid with this gross looking like divot in my skin because you want to remove this mold today. So we ended up rescheduling it for the next month. At this time I like I went to Worlds and I was back to work after Worlds and then we had this appointment coming up and I honestly was not gonna go because it was during a work day, but what ended up happening is I had a double shift. So I worked from like 12 to two and then I had my appointment and then I went back to work. So it just like worked out perfectly and I thought, okay, I better just get it done and do it. They removed it. I was being made fun of the next month. My friends were like laughing and being like, oh Tamara, you have a hickey. It was just like a funny thing. Uh, and then I got the call. And I remember very vividly, it was the middle of January. My friend Sarah and I were out for ice cream and I get this call. It was from my dermatology clinic and they said, hey, we need you to come in tomorrow uh, to see Dr. Wong and they're suggesting that you bring a family member. I just remember like being so panicked because I had no idea what that meant. I assumed it was bad but I knew nothing about skin cancer. I knew nothing about melanoma. I called my mom right away, just pretty much hysterical. And yeah, we were both really upset that day, just wondering what it could be. And I went into the appointment the next day and uh, he told me that I had stage one melanoma. And I pretty much was like, what in the f is melanoma? <laughs> He basically just really tried to emphasize that people with melanoma do well nowadays, that we, that they do really well. I just, I was so naive, I had no idea really anything about melanoma, I just thought it's skin cancer, like it just is on your skin. So he said that the next step is that I'm going to see a surgeon. They were, ended up removing about a centimeter of skin all the way around where the biopsy area was. And then I had the choice of doing a lymph node biopsy or not. So I did opt to do the lymph node biopsy. And I had that done about two weeks after the initial diagnosis. Um, that was it. 
I was cleared. I was basically set to do three month follow-ups where I get my full uh, skin check, that's what they call it. The dermatologist looks over my skin, makes sure there's no new marks, no new areas to biopsy. So that was my stage one diagnosis. I A, never called it cancer. B, I just basically told people if they asked about this scar on my neck because it was quite vague. It was just like this blip that had happened, but everything went back to normal and I never really thought I had cancer, I guess. It was just me being very naive and I don't think my doctor did the best job at educating me on what melanoma is. Definitely something that I wish had been explained to me more is that uh, melanoma is really serious. Uh, even despite being a stage 1 diagnosis. So yeah, I had this weird cancer thing that just popped up and life resumed as normal. 2017 came along and this was the year of the World Games, which might I add I had been thinking about since 2013 when I became a senior and I was really, really hoping I was going to get the spot. January of 2017 was really tough. Our gym had collapsed in December. I just come back from this big trip to South America and I wasn't really in the mood to train. The gym affected me a lot more than I thought it was going to. We trained at like a circus school, we trained at another uh, club that let us train there which is a whole other story. We trained at, at the New West High School. <laughs> Which was hilarious that I did some of my best trainings in this little gym in a high school where we had to run out of the storage closet and it was the summertime, it was so hot. I was really kind of unmotivated and I wasn't really sure what I wanted to do. I think it was about March that the list came out for who they decided to go to World Games and um, I'd made the team. I was so ecstatic. Uh, but I was still not really training at this point and I competed at our provincials and I did so awfully like I did so bad and it was the only time my boyfriend's ever come to see me. I really believe if you're not willing to put in 100% then don't do it at all. Don't waste your time. If you're not gonna if you're not gonna work hard for it then just don't do it. That's just honestly how I feel about most things in life. That's what I did from March until July, until we left for World Games, I worked really hard. I didn't drink, I ate really healthy. I was just working and training and that's all I did with my time. And July comes around and I go to nationals and I ended up uh, winning nationals. And then we left right from Toronto to go to World Games and I ended up winning a silver medal at World Games. and. It was by far the highlight of my career and it was it's such a fond memory and I'm really thankful I got that opportunity because it was only a couple weeks after that that I noticed the lump. So 